It was the longest day of the year. The sun hanging high in the sky, as if holding its breath and waiting for him to die. It was the roses that took me back there with their sweet, sickly smell. So I was once again moving backwards, away from his bed, past the fish tank, through the conservatory and out into the garden. Birds and flowers still implausibly doing their thing. Birds just singing. Fucking birds. <laughs> I fell to the floor, crumpled, a giant pair of scissors in my hands. A stranger, a woman I'd met briefly that morning. She began moving towards me, her mouth gaping open like a fish. She stopped suddenly as if hitting a force field and floated away. My guttural no had surprised us both. I was numb, but didn't know it. Unable to think, except in short, sharp sentences. I looked down at my hands, and I remembered, gather flowers. Gather flowers. I moved slowly through the bushes, cutting here and there, creating a haphazard bouquet to lay on his body, already cold, empty now, devoid of him. I wasn't even there when he died. He went without me, though I'd been with him all the way. Sleeping beside him on a camp bed the last six nights, the nurses knowing better than to disagree. I'd been gone literally two minutes, giving myself a talking to, having a pee. And he went, that's when he died. That's one of my wounds. What I've just described is something of my experience of the death of my love, Martin Booth. We actually met at Yes Group about 15 years ago. We fell in love. We had a baby girl, Mia, who's here in the audience today. His outline is part of the Yes Group logo still. Every time I come to Yes Group, I'm surrounded by him. Over these last 11 years, I've had three very different relationships with this pain, this wound. First, I became super detached from it. Second, incredibly attached, got lost in it. And finally, I found a middle ground. I was able to be with it. So first, over here. Like I said earlier, I was numb but didn't know it. That is what my body did naturally, my system did. And thank God, you know, it shut down. It numbed me out. But pretty soon this wore off, it faded. So I was left with the pain. So I became very good at numbing myself. Found various ways, like we do. I ate a lot of chocolate. <laughs> I watched a lot of movies and read books. I got very, very busy. That wasn't hard. I had a one-year-old. But all of that time, I was turning away from the pain, trying to get away. It was kind of the baddie. But what happened to the pain when I did that? I know I secretly hoped it would have evaporated and disappeared that I would have healed, grieved, but it hadn't. 
As Carl Jung said, what we resist, it not only persists, but it will grow in size. So I went from this place, and as we can so often do, I went to the other extreme and moved over here to a place of becoming totally attached to this wound. I got lost in it. I admit that. There's no shame in that. I was trying to cope. I was floundering trying to find my way. So it's a kind of victim space. And as um, Carolyn Miss says, she calls this woundology, where we use our wounds as a kind of currency to connect with others. We share our stories. We come to define ourselves and our identity in this way. So that's what I did. And my story of becoming a widow at 33 and a single mom. My mom had also died just before Martin. You know, there was a lot of story there and I got lost there for a while. But after a time, it became super heavy, really heavy. And I wanted to put it down. But who was I without it? Who was I without this wound, this story? And how would I connect with these people I'd been connecting with? But I wanted to, because there's not much growth here, not much learning. So I went back and forth. I went some time over here in becoming detached, some time being attached, and I was confused and lost and moving back and forth. Exhausting. And then I stopped. I turned towards myself, I turned towards my pain. I sat down, pulled up a chair, made a cup of tea, turned towards myself. I leaned in as if I was whispering to myself, I will stay with you however you are. And I remember vividly the first time I did this. I was sitting on the dining room floor on the hardwood, my back against the radiator. And I was literally terrified. I thought I would die. I thought I would disappear, explode, disintegrate. Every fiber of me wanted to run away and escape. But I stayed. And something curious happened. I wasn't expecting. The pain, I felt it rise, peak, and then fall. So here's four things that I learned in this place. So first of all, that it's a wave. And so rather than drowning me, as I'd feared, I felt it flow through me. This was a huge turning point for me. Second thing, this right here, it's a place of grace. Each time I turn towards myself, my pain, I am honoring not only me, but Martin, I'm honoring my humanness. We are all in this together. We all have pain. And I'm also honoring my courage to love. The third thing.
There is great vulnerability when I stay here too. It took a huge amount of courage to stay. It would have been so easy to run away. There's a thing called the Radiance Sutras. I don't know if you've heard of it. I love that name though. And it says that right here, right here in the middle of the feeling, attend the blossoming. And that's what I found. In this place, I found courage. I found trust and a confidence in myself that I had never, ever known before. And a compassion for myself and everyone else. I wonder which wounds in you are ready to be turned towards, ready to be healed. I invite you to wonder that just for a moment. Which of your wounds can you turn towards? And I wonder what the world would be like if we were all able to turn to ourselves and say, I will stay with you, however you are. I will stay, however you are. Thank you. <laughs> One of our Yes Sex 2019 winner. Come up, Claire. I am utterly gobsmacked and blown away. I just hardly know what to say, but I am, I mean, the speeches, the talks from everyone today have been utterly breathtaking and phenomenal. <laughs> I can hardly believe I'm standing here and I am so grateful and honored. I can't believe it. <laughs> wow, Woo! And, and I can't believe it. Even. This is my first ever time speaking on stage. <laughs> thank you, thank you.